Our gospel lesson will come from the fifth chapter of Matthew, verses 21 through 37. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory, Glory be to thee, thee O Lord. Lord. Jesus said, You have heard that it was said to those of ancient times, You shall not murder, and whoever murders shall be liable to judgment. But I say to you that if you are angry with a brother or sister, you will be liable to judgment. And if you insult a brother or sister, you will be liable to the council. And if you say, you fool, you will be liable to the hell of fire. So when you are offering your gift at the altar, if you remember that your brother or sister has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go first to be reconciled to your brother or sister and then come and offer your gift come to terms quickly with your accuser while you are on the way to court with them or your accuser may hand you over to the judge and the judge to the guard and you will be thrown into prison truly I tell you you will never get out until you have paid the last penny. You have heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman with lust has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members than for your whole body to go into hell. It was also said, whoever divorces his wife, let him get her a certificate of divorce. But I say to you that anyone who divorces his wife, except on the ground of unchastity, causes her to commit adultery. And whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. Again, you have heard that it was said to those of ancient times, you shall not swear falsely, but carry out the vows you have made to the Lord. But I say to you, do not swear at all, either by heaven, for it is the throne of God, or by the earth, for it is his footstool, or by your head, for you cannot make one hair white or black. Let your word be yes, yes, or no, no. Anything more than this comes from the evil one. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, Lord Christ, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus received a grand introduction in Matthew's Gospel, and we've pointed out before that it happened in a relatively brief amount of time. In the first two chapters of Matthew, the, right, the writer introduces us to Emmanuel, God with us, the son of David, king of the Jews, a threat to Herod's throne, the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world, and proclaimer of the kingdom of God. Then Matthew takes us to the most anticipated event of Jesus' early ministry, which is what we've been covering for three Sundays now, so far in our lectionary, and that is the Sermon on the Mount, where Jesus gives his audience not only good teachings, but a glimpse of this kingdom. Today we cover a portion of that sermon, which is known as the Antithesis. Repeated again and again in this formula of antithesis is, you heard it said, but I say to you. However, there's a little bit of a shortcoming when we refer to these as antithesis 
Because that suggests that Jesus is contradicting whatever he said earlier. But we learn as we read on that that is not the case at all. One of the early and continuing misgivings about Jesus' ministry is that he arrived on the scene as a political radical seeking to overthrow and or invalidate the law and that was never the case. One of the ongoing misunderstandings about Jesus' ministry is that he came to contradict the law which again was never the case. When we study the antitheses, we get instead a clearer picture and a life-changing lesson about Jesus' view of the law and also the breadth of his ministry and teachings. Jesus is showing what he meant earlier in the Sermon on the Mount when he said he came not to abolish the law, but to fulfill it and to teach a greater righteousness. Jesus said, if your righteousness does not surpass that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never get into the kingdom of heaven. He is saying with clarity that the commandments are not just rules that are meant to be followed. They are given so that by following them, we might conform to a greater righteousness. In the moral life, we can think of commandments in two basic ways. One way is to think of a commandment as a rule by which we evaluate the rightness or wrongness of a given action. We might think of a commandment like, Thou shalt not bear false witness as a simple rule against the deliberate telling of untruths. A second way to think of a commandment is as a guide and exhortation to help form our moral character. Under this understanding, a rule is followed not just for the sake of following it, but to help us be predisposed to better character. Jesus, however, teaches us in the antitheses that neither of these two understandings is sufficient. Jesus takes our understanding and application of the law to a much higher and truly life-changing level. Another angle you can take is to consider the pattern of Jewish law and observance that Jesus and the disciples were all born into. In Jesus' time, there were literally volumes upon volumes of writings that were readily available on the study of the law in Jerusalem. Jesus would have met local expectation if his Sermon on the Mount had added additional volumes to that gigantic library and provided the Jewish culture with yet another set of rules and suggestions and customs that would somehow make the law more applicable to their everyday culture and make them feel elevated as a result of that. But Jesus did not fall into that expectation and the antitheses are evidence of it. Jesus shows ever so clearly that he came to fulfill the law and to take the understanding of the law again to a life changing level. Take a 
closer look at some of what he said. You have heard that it was said to those in ancient times, you shall not murder, and whoever murders shall be liable to judgment. But I say to you that if you are angry with a brother or sister, you will be liable to judgment. Jesus is not contradicting the commandment against murder, nor is he just clarifying the commandment. Instead, Jesus is intensifying the commandment. Anyone, even a non-believer, can keep the commandment not to kill. But our human nature, our flawed human nature, can still cause us to hate and despise others and to even wish that certain people were dead. We can follow the rule and still in our minds kill people and still in our minds treat people as if they were dead. Jesus shows that the fulfillment of the commandment not to kill is the formation of our hearts and minds so that we look at others not with anger but with love. The greater righteousness is to love others as we would have them love us and are you ready for this hold on to your pew even when they are our enemies the commandment is given not just so we won't kill each other but so that we will be the type of people who will seek out someone who has wronged us and work to be reconciled with them. Are you still holding on? That's a tough one. Here's another. You have heard that it was said you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman with lust has already, already committed adultery with her in his heart. Again. Jesus is not contradicting the commandment against adultery and he is not simply clarifying it. He's not giving a new application to it. He is taking the commandment to a life-changing level. Jesus knows that even if we keep the commandment not to commit adultery, we can still demean and belittle with lustful looks and thoughts, treat others as objects and take what doesn't belong to us even at a distance. Jesus shows that the fulfillment of the commandment not to commit adultery is really a faithful heart that cherishes our spouses and respects the dignity of others. And yet another. You've heard that it was said to those of ancient times, you shall not bear falsely, but carry out the vows you have made to the Lord. But I say to you, do not swear at all, either by heaven, for it is the throne of God, or by earth, for it is his footstool, or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. And do not swear by your head, for you cannot make one hair white or black. Let your word be yes, yes, or no, no. Jesus is not contradicting the commandment against swearing falsely. He is intensifying it. Even if we can keep ourselves from swearing falsely, we can still manipulate others with our words and lead them astray with our tongues. <clears throat> we can make frivolous oaths in the name of heaven and belittle God's holy name. Jesus shows us that the fulfillment of the law is not just to restrain ourselves from swearing falsely, but that our words are so honest that we never even need an oath. 
The greater righteousness is to let your yes be yes and your no be no. The commandment is given so that we would become honest people through every aspect of our character. This is life changing. It's not simply life altering. It's transformational. Jesus came not to abolish the law, but to fulfill it. Jesus came to call and form disciples in a community that is devoted to this higher righteousness. We follow the commandments not simply because they are established and agreeable rules. We follow the commandments so that we might become the type of people Christ wants us to be. People who are formed and fashioned for life in the kingdom of God. At the beginning of the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus gives us a description of the character of disciples fit for the kingdom. And in an earlier sermon, we illustrated this as a preamble to Jesus' ministry and a preamble to the mission of the church. And you'll remember, these are famous words. It's, blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. We share in the blessedness when we take the commandments of God to that life-changing, intensified level. We become the type of people who following the law with true intention grow in grace. God gave the commandments not so that we would become moral rule keepers and not just for us to have a stronger character, but in order that we become people who are pure in heart so that we might, might fulfill His summary of the law, that we love the Lord our God with all our heart and soul and might and that we might love our neighbor as ourselves. Remember this. Keep this in mind as we move to dismiss this time of worship is that Jesus said, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. And so knowing that, may our lives be fulfilled and changed accordingly and may we share in the blessing of His eternal kingdom. Amen. Amen. Amen.